All right, guys, ready for this? This is gonna f murder his ass. Dude, Minai coming in huge, dude. Unfortunately, you saw it's kind of nerfed now because he's not gonna deal much damage to them. But still, boom! Hello, how is it going? It is uh, Fake Hero coming at you once again with another Legends of Runeterra video. It is patch 1.6. I have another deck guide for you guys. I would like to share with you a Yasuo Katarina control list that is not featuring Will of Ionia and I've done this on purpose. I wanted to see what the deck might look like without a slow card because Will of Ionia sort of is a slow card and especially now that it's 5 mana, it kind of was a slow card. And, and you know, we have other ways of, re of removing stuff and controlling the board. I wanted to experiment and see just how far I could push it without and so far it's been performing honestly pretty good i'm not sure if it's strictly because of the will of ionia not being run or the meta around us but i'm really enjoying this away control and most importantly i'm enjoying it against ash sejuani which is extremely popular right now I find you saw decks like this to pretty much be very powerful against uh, mid-range decks. So let's talk about the cards. We'll go through a list really quickly. So we have a uh, one copy of Minas Swiftfoot. Because I'm not running Will of Ionia, I want some big late game bomb that can kind of promote the same kind of effect. And Minai is generally pretty crazy. You saw in the little uh, intro there just what it can do. Uh, basically against late game mid-range decks that play like big units all at once, this can just fuck up their tempo completely and just take over the board. Plus you can level up your Yasuo all in one hit. I'm treating Minai similar to a Riptide Rex as an alternative late game finish bomb. Really powerful. I've experimented with running two on the list, but usually you want to draw into one and it's a very unique situation, but I won't go into too much more detail about Midnight Swiftfoot, but honestly, very powerful. Just a single copy of Yone for similar reasons to Minai. It's another late game finisher and I don't want too many of these. At first I had two of each, Minai and Yone, but I've just trimmed it down looking for more early game. <clears throat> Pardon me. Three times minutes to recognize this is a very powerful stun and control effect and it can allow you to start locking down the board later in the game. Two times intimidating raw, especially now with a bunch of PNZ decks running around. I wanted to squeeze in three, but the list was really tight and I wanted to run triple deny at the moment. But intimidating raw slaps. You have this with your Suo and you just completely slap the board. Speaking of which, we're obviously going to be running uh, three copies of your Suo. This is like the all around build of the deck, which makes it a bit of a struggle because it's very draw dependent in this deck. I find that when it comes to the mulligan, it is the most important part, which we will talk about very shortly. I'll leave it in pinged in the timestamps, but the mulligan for this deck so far is very tricky. And sometimes you have to mulligan quite a greedy, but regardless, you saw as the alternate win condition, the Steel Tempest is great. This, the buff to Steel Tempest makes it a very interesting inclusion. And we'll go more about that in a sec. Three times Spirit's Refuge, I like this for trading into mid-range decks and just granting a lot of healing against aggro and more ways to protect your Suo is quite important. Three times Deny, more ways of protecting your Suo, more ways of denying Harrowing and denying some big late game bombs and in case War Mothers start to run around, I just want plenty of ways to deny my opponent's strategy and deny is a card that strictly does that it doesn't help us much against mid-range decks right like ash and sejuani or tempo sejuani etc however it does help us in like every other matchup and we already do find that matchup to be quite decent uh three times concussive concussive palm the stun effect the three two body it makes a lot of sense and it's still going to be an inclusion i trimmed down a little bit to run extra still tempest found that i still need a little bit more value in this deck and concussive palm is great for providing this deck uh, value in one card since the card draw is quite limited correct uh, i've decided instead of doing you swain i would like to do you katarina i strictly find this to be a little bit better right now it helps us when we get the blades edge especially with uh, katarina because you can activate Ravenous Flock as another alternate way of doing that, as well as dealing with the early game board and getting rid of chump blockers is kind of important for this list. So we can start to connect big face damage with Flay, Fey Blade Twirler. And so our, our Minotaur Reckoner can actually, you know, stun decent targets. I sometimes find if a board goes super wide enough and I haven't found Intimidating Raw, it can be quite tricky for us to deal with. So more early game is going to be quite important. Hence why another inclusion here is going to be three times house spider. I want the wide bodies. I want more ways to trade into things, activating ravenous flock and trimming down the board the best I can. So right now I like three times house spider. And also we're going to be running a uh, three times arachnoid sentry and alongside sentry, I love ravenous flock, very good early game removal. And it's another reason why we completely slap on mid range decks. 
two times steel tempest actually this card is proving to be extremely effective it's very good in the early game it's a good way of like buying time early as well there's been a couple of scenarios i've bumped into where coming to the realization that this being two mana is actually extremely relevant for example floating mana in the first few turns and you're leading into like a yasuo etc maybe on your opponent's attacking evens and you play yasuo you have mana banked up for still tempest it's huge uh this actually provides you a lot of temper this card and you'd be quite surprised i'm going to be running a single copy of retreat because as i said uh finding card draw is very limited and i'm struggling to figure it out the best way to build this list but retreat in a sense is kind of like card draw it provides us more value in hand and it's also very flexible similar to how some players would treat fading memories example swim in a deep list where you're just replaying certain valuable cards and it's very flexible you can do many different things with it a good example is retreating your Arachnoid Sentry or protecting your Katarina. Not only this, but your recall effect is going to be indeed buffing your Suo and having the ability to protect key units later in the game, especially like your Suo and play something else can sometimes be irrelevant. I want to talk about this card in particular, three times key guardian. Uh, to a lot of people, this might seem like a bit of a weird choice of cards personally i really want card draw i like my decks to have lots of card draw i find it easier to play games out when i've got more resources in hand and that's what this deck wants to do so even if this was a two mana draw one card at burst speed it would still i would probably still be leaning towards playing it the fact that it gives barrier is just another bonus so the main reason why i'm running this card guys is strictly for card draw and to keep the gas going and so i don't run into a brick hand which happens kind of often so three times key guardian is great. It's also good for putting on early game units so you can get more trades and keep your board sticking around for longer. Uh, also granting key guardian onto uh, Katarina is gonna help her flip and it's also gonna help protect your sword when you play him. Uh, three times the Fey Blade Twiller. Uh, you saw Swain, I probably wouldn't run this. You saw control with Katarina, I probably would. More ways to buff Fey Blade Twiller. And having a few two drops is good for contesting the board early. And it just honestly uh, synergizes with the rest of the deck. Sounds like a great inclusion and can sometimes punch your opponent in the face. Three times Ravenous Flock is our limited removal. So this is a great inclusion. There's a uh, plenty of stun effects, plenty of ways to deal damage. Mostly in terms of damage, how Spider is going to be your wide bodies that can sometimes trade into units. Especially relevant going into mid range when your Spiderling trades into a 5 5 unit. Ravenous Flock can clear it afterwards or force them to use more important resources. That wraps up the deck summary. I hope that makes a lot of sense and you understand why the cards are here. I want to talk about the Mulligan very quickly. Let's jump across. So for the Mulligan, uh, this deck in particular, it really struggles on draws. So the best step you can take is to do a really good Mulligan and understand uh, the ways to win each matchup. In general though, finding a curve is going to be the way to go. So anything that is like from 3 costs or below in terms of like House Spider, Fey Blade Twirler, etc. Arachnoid Sentry, Katarina, etc. These cards will be very useful in the early game in almost every matchup, even against Control, having these kind of cards is going to help you. Like Fey Blade Twirler is already a good early game card as well as uh, Punishing for Control decks. And Katarina can generally be a great keep, especially with the Blade's Edge, it's going to be super useful for the early game. Now, outside of that, against the mid-range decks and control decks, you can honestly uh, look for the similar kind of cards. But uh, on top of all these things, one of the most important cards in this deck is going to be Yusuo. Now, I'm not going to say that you should keep Yusuo every time, but if you find a decent curve that includes Yusuo in that, you should always keep that hand. Yusuo is literally going to be the card that buys the most tempo and the most board control. So it's a very good idea to try and keep this when you can. Now, against control though, uh, and you haven't found a curve, you still keep your sewer, you sewer, you sewer, sewer against every control deck, even if the rest of your hand looks kind of clunky. Just kick the most expensive cards and hope that you find an early game. Against aggro, you might not consider keeping your sewer if the rest of your hand is quite expensive. But again, if you find a decent early game that curves into your sewer, that's going to be a great keep. What I mean to say, guys, is basically look for the early game units. As always, tempo is quite an important thing in most card games, especially Rune Terror. So that's going to help you a lot. But in general, these uh, these cards above for the uh, early game, three mana and below is going to help you quite a lot. And honestly, I find Concussive Palm to be one of the most useful cards in every matchup. It provides some tempo while stunning a unit. It's a four mana card that provides a couple of great effects. And in, with a deck with limited card draw, it's going to help you quite a lot. I don't think you'll ever keep 
uh, expensive cards. But I will talk about one unique situation when you're versing an aggro deck and you've managed to find a decent curve. Let's say your ha opening hand is House Spider, maybe Katarina Yasuo. And maybe you've been offered Intimidating Raw in the opening hand. You might keep Intimidating Raw. Right now it's going to be super effective against PNZ decks, which are kind of popular right now. Even when they play suit up, this is still going to stun all of them. And most of the time you're literally going to stun their entire boards. Alongside your sword, that should automatically win you a game most of the time. Never keep the 6, 7 or 9 drops. Uh, never keep Spirit's Refuge, especially if you haven't got units, then it's going to clunk your hand out. Hopefully draw into the cards that you need, like Spirit's Refuge, similar with Deny. But outside of that, this early game is going to help you a lot. You find units, you find a key guardian, you can keep it, and that should hopefully help you along the way. Now, it's really important that you take as much time to think about every matchup in the Mulligan stage as you can, because card draw is super limited, and this is why I feature uh, three copies of Key Guardian. Also, Defiance, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were talking about the Arena Bookie replacement. I gave you a rough replacement, like a rough one, but I realized there was probably a better card to consider using maybe in this new discard deck, which would be uh, Battlecaster. Arena Battlecaster would be pretty cool. I've noticed that with this deck, you have to kind of mulligan pretty greedily. I'll be finding myself keeping 4 drops and stuff. It's kind of weird. These two cards together should hopefully win me the game. Against what I'm assuming is just like kind of like PNZ aggro. <laughs> okay. So I just need to make it to turn 5 while playing Yasuo. It's actually ironically quite hard for them to clear the Yasuo, which is really cool. Like, from what I understand, it's a bit hard. Weird pass. I think I should end the turn here. He wants to be spending his mana. Yeah, yeah, I think I want to be ending. Now, do I just play Yasuo now? That's the thing. I could always, like, key Guardian it helps to play around a few cards. Death is like win, always by my side. Battlecaster. Yeah, Arena Arena Battlecaster. It's a 2 mana 2-2 two, two that grants all attacking allies a buff. Life and death. This swing should be free, I'm pretty sure. Am I missing something? No, we have quick attack plus. God, I'm pretty sure this swing's meant to be okay. So here's the crazy thing, if he develops, I just fucking cuck him, dude. If he doesn't develop, I've got Steel Tempest plus Intimidating Roar. Alright, check this out guys, he's about to get his ass handed to him. That's cool, that's cool. If he decides to like... Just open attack, I'll just fucking, I'll stun his board. Watch this dude, if he develops, he's so fucked. <laughs> he's so fucked. I don't think he could stop this. It's it's quite hard for him. If okay, if he gets kill my Yasuo, I'm fucked. I still stun his board though, so it's not the worst. Oh he saves his um a couple of units here. That's okay. I think that's still pretty worth. Plus I'm still stunning his board, right? So oh, I'm not stunning his board. So do I tank 10? I probably don't tank 10. Yeah, I don't tank 10. I've got another Yasuo in hand. That's dope. Again, can he hurt me? No. Oh man, we're strong. The party has arrived. Oh my god. We're crazy. This is a mana. I ironically, I think I need to stun the... I need to stun the Jinx last. That's my plan here. 
Dude, this, this, this Steel Tempest 2 mana being super relevant right now. Ordering is important here. We'll just go for this. I still think it's pretty hard for them to clear my Yasuo. <laughs> Get clapped. I've clapped Jinx a second time. Two time back to back against that kind of deck. Let's go 500 LP. It is about time. Is that 500? Don't cuck me. Oh, you cucked me. You cucked me. Goal on my whiteboard. It says today's goal is 500 LP. Let's go. And I'm versing Gustavo for like the 50th time today. I know he's bet me twice. Let's see how the deck performs now against what I thought would be a decent matchup for us. Like, I feel like you saw generally collapse mid range decks. Okay, we don't keep intimidating raw. Oh, fuck, it's hard for me to think about keeping Key Guardian. Every time I've versed Isu, like every time I've versed, sorry, um, Ash, they've had Omen Hawk turn one on attacking odds. Let's see how we go when we're on attacking odds. And they don't get Omen Hawk. This should be good for us. Floating mana is really good for us. I've seen this before and I got super baited by this play, guys. They pass because I'm gonna play something, he's gonna play Trefuro and Assessor, so I get baited by playing something. But if I just play House Spider, it's fine, because he'll just like, it won't be the good play for him to trade off. Or he might have had no unit in hand, but I've been baited by a place. GD Maverick fucked me up with that play. I'm gonna open attack here. I could play Blade Twirler and push one more damage potentially, or it could get clapped by um, Culling Strike. Yeah, Culling Strikes, Culling Strike, it is what it is. I'd rather he Culling Strikes my Blade Twirl than my Yasuo. Okay, I'm back. What's up, dude? The two time. I have Ravenous Flock in my hand. I have the potential to clear it, clear and rage ready. I think I might have revealed to my opponent what my hand is by this play. But I still don't mind it. I still don't mind it. I can always pass here. Like, why should I play it now? In case he heals. Catarina seems okay here. Like nothing else we're really playing other than house spiders for chump blockers. I get ruined by frostbite here. I know that for sure. Winter, take you. Am I happy to end the round and make him float three mana? I think so. Okay, I've got the anti culling strike card. Okay, let's do this. Where's the two time? You mean Viserys, the two time. Poor chillin', he'll be streaming soon. I mean, if you wanna do that, that's fine, buddy. Like, you're still losing your unit. That didn't seem worth it all. I guess he wants to keep my board in check. I'm gonna pass here. I think that's what I've been doing wrong. I've been playing too much like I'm the aggressor. Where I'm not. I can just react to everything he does. 
This having key, key the buff isn't too relevant, really. Okay, it's a pretty dope open attack. I could almost swing with um. This deck makes me fucking think. Yo, Isaac C. Chuck, you sent you you sent me a deck the other day, and um uh yeah, I was meaning to check it out, man. Thanks for reminding me. How's the cat bean in this deck? A lot. I like this a lot better than Swain right now. Cat being able to provide a lot more utility. That I might just suck at playing your sort Swain. But since I since I swapped over to this variant, I've been kicking ass, dude. I've been taking names, dude. I've been taking names. Now the, I'm trying to work out if I can swing with Minotaur Reckoner, like just to be extra aggressive. Like the punish would be that he plays um like a buff. I don't I don't mind this trade. I, I feel like it's okay. Yeah, but Brinster, this deck's been cool, man. I've been really enjoying it. I was playing a lot of it last night. I've dropped two games to Ash Shejuani, though. However, this time I feel like I'm in a much better position. And ho However, they had started attacking odds with Omen Hawk two times, so... Now, do I think it's worth to save my Blade Dweller? Wait, he's still losing it. Oh, it's plus two, plus two. Yeah. I think it might be worth to save my Blade Twiller. What's crazy here is I can, um, I could replay Katarina, but I don't think it's going to be as good. I have a list that beats Asha Juwani. Do you? Is it another weird nuclear option, man? Your silver, Isaac Chivak? No worries. By the way, I have an Iron to Master's Guide. Maybe that could help. You think the nuclear option slaps Ash to Juwani? I'll end the round here. Again, we have to keep going with the um the fact that we should not be the aggressor ever. We should just react to everything that he does. So in that case, I'm just going to kill. Chill. That's some pretty average card draw. I'm just gonna play Katarina. Just cause he has like no mana and like it's kind of like fine. What's crazy here is I can actually like stun his board. Maybe perhaps this is being too aggressive. Any difference with this being at 2 HP? I think not. Now I'm opening myself up to Culling Strike if I do this. But it only hits my Blade Twirler, and that's all of his mana. And if he wants a Culling Strike, he wants to Culling Strike the Blade Twirler, which is like, whatever. And if he does not have Culling Strike, we're about to be in a pretty crazy spot. Let me just calculate this. So he has one blocker on field, which he blocks into my Minotaur, right? So we probably can't afford to like, let the Minotaur go down for no reason. So in that case, we don't swing like that. This looks super strong. And I pretty much force him into blocking me. Okay, losing the Katarina kind of sucks. But we've got a decent open attack for sure. Uh, maybe not as good as I'd hoped. Hmm. We'll see what he does here. I'm probably going to Spirit's Refuge, my Minotaur Reckoner here. I want to force him to block me. I know what his top deck was, right? It was the Crystal Arrow, so he's forced into whatever cards he has on the left-hand side. Harsh wins? Feels uncomfortable, man. But at least it's not on my turn. Okay. Like, what I thought why, what I thought was a fucking... gonna be a fucking blowout game suddenly feels like it is not. Feels icky, man. Dude, I thought we were in a great spot. And now, apparently not. I've got the denies ready. I need him to be sitting on, like, 
Like, I know what he's going to do here. He's going to play fucking... He's going to play Crystal Arrow for sure. It is 100% the play. Glad to feel welcomed. I can't believe he developed here. I can stop the Ash from attacking now. That was so random. So he's sitting on the Crystal Arrow and he just, instead of... Ah, I don't know. Am I missing something or did he just make some wacky plays? I mean, at any point I could have drew Yasuo like five turns earlier. That would have helped a lot. So I know he has Crystal Arrow in hand and I don't know what the other cards are. The deck needs card draw rip, Shadow Assassin. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. That's why I'm running Key Guardian. It's literally just card draw, but outside of it, it hasn't got much utility. I can deny him card draw here, which is really good. I think that's like one of the better things about denying this right now. We're just passing. I need to punish him for attacking me some way. I need to punish him for attacking me, for sure. That's literally why I'm running Key Guardian though. The deck definitely needs card draw. Like you need to find your pieces. Like I'm trying to figure, a way to figure out a way to balance the value of each card versus the actual card draw itself. If that makes sense. What's the punish if I play something here? I could always stun the Ash. There's sometimes a lethal if he has no units in hand. I'll attempt, I'll play, I'll just play the, I'll play the Arachnoid Sentry here and see what he does. I literally just thought about switching out of Noxus just to have access to card draw, but it doesn't seem worth, no. It is extremely hard to justify leaving Noxus right now when building a Yusuo deck. This is a bit odd. I'm curious as to whether or not he has units in hand. If I play Intimidating Roar, is that like really Papega? Or is that like Five Head? He's probably got harsh wins in hand, so I'm not pushing lethal. How the f, f a... How the f a bounce costs more than a counter this game sometimes? A bounce? What do you mean by bounce? See, that's a fucking problem. I could have maybe won this game if I just went in. Yeah. This Omen Hawk is just literally ass. That's a draw though. That's a draw. Uh, okay, buddy. So he's gonna, he's going to drag my At least these ones can't block. Ah, oh, come on. This fucking Omen Hawk, dude. Ah, oh, dude, literally too late, man. Don't have like Fear of the North or something. I can't afford to play around that right now. I need him to trade me off. I can't afford to not swing here. Fake hero, do you know eye size matters? Yeah, he's popped into my stream. What's weird here is I can actually intimidating roar to clear the hawk. Which I think is actually worth it, unfortunately. I need to draw like a stun card or something. I need a stun card like ASAP. Oh, dude, let me play that. Don't attack. Oh my God. Uh. Fuck man. This is so weird.
There's a chance I have lethal next turn. If he if he lets my Reckoner stick, he might lose the game. Yeah, he worked it out. So I guess I kind of go for the Tales of the Dragon block 100% now. Oh, dude. Yeah, I can deny this. A man of many answers. A man of many answers. Okay, here's the play. He doesn't draw a unit. Oh, I'm about to, I'm about to five hit him. I'm about to five hit him, guys. I'm about to five hit him. He's going to play a unit here. Damn it, I didn't five hit him. <laughs> He five hit me. If it's Fury, he would have saved his Ash, right? Ah, oh, fuck it. I'm going for it. If he has a unit in hand, I'm going to be losing my mind a little bit. I guess it wasn't a unit. What was it? Culling Strike or Brutal Steel? He drew. Finally! Dude, that should have been like an instant win. That took so fucking goddamn long. Is that 500 LP? Ah! Let's go.